The process of melanogenesis, which is the production of melanin pigment, begins with the introduction of the mighty melanocyte. Resembling an octopus, the melanocyte is found in the stratum germinativum of the epidermis. There is approximately one melanocyte to every 10 keratinocytes along the dermal epidermal junction. Those melanocytes have the ability via their dendritic octopus-like legs to provide melanin pigment to approximately 35 keratinocytes in the layers of the epidermis. The melanocyte cell itself never moves from the stratum germinativum. How, so how did it get there? Melanocytes originate from the neural crest and migrate to the epidermis. These precursors to melanocytes are referred to as melanoblasts. The number of melanocytes is similar no matter what color your skin is. It's the activity and distribution of the melanin that differs. Within the melanocyte itself, little packages are evident. These neat little membrane-bound packages are called melanosomes. These melanosomes go through four stages of maturation before they're able to leave the melanocyte and provide melanin pigment to their surrounding keratinocytes. There are two types of melanosomes that can be formed. This differentiation occurs based on the pathway of melanogenesis that's taken during the formation. The first type is eumelanin, and if you notice, it's one big blob of melanin pigment surrounded by a casing or a membrane. These are referred to as eumelanosomes. Eumelanin forms either of the brown-black pigments. There are actually two forms of eumelanin, but we'll talk about the differences when we look at the process of melanogenesis. In contrast, pheomelanin is the reddish-brown melanin seen in lighter skin types or those with red or blonde hair. As you can see, the pigment is not, isn't uniform and it's scattered within the casing. These are referred to as pheomelanosomes. Melanosomes synthesize only one type of melanin, either euomelanin or pheomelanin, but that depends on the melanogenesis pathway they've taken. However, the melanin produced overall may be a combination of eumelanin and pheomelanin, and the individual will have a different combination which will determine the overall color of their skin. Lasers may be used for the treatment of hyperpigmentation, and some lasers are more suited to the task than others. Lasers do not target melanin production, but they are, and they are not tyrosinase inhibitors, nor do they inhibit any other part of the melanogenesis process. They do, however, speed up the removal of melanin debris. Lasers will usually be combined with topicals that specifically target melanogenesis or some other reaction during mel melanogenesis. The risks associated with the use of some lasers is thermal tissue damage. Picosecond lasers are considered a more effective laser option, particularly for melasma. Pico lasers have a photoacoustic photo as opposed to a photothermal effect, which is considered more effective for mixed melasma conditions. For the treatment of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and sun-induced pigmentation, IPL lasers can be used. Intense pulse light penetrates to the dermis where the melanin absorbs the light energy and converts to heat. The heat destroys the pigment.